Hi, Tony here, and I'd like to thank you for watching this second video. We're going to focus on the foundations of storyboarding in this film. So before we get going, um, here are the two characters that I decided to do a rough board of. We've got Alex and Claire. It's a basic two character setup, walking through the park, telling jokes to each other. Now, when we think about the foundations of storyboard, um, I'd like to kind of talk about something called stage line and cinematography. We'll go into that before we go into detail. So at any rate, I've got a line going through these two characters, Alex and Claire, and they may be walking through the park and we got trees and a pond and benches. And essentially what I want to do is to imagine a line that goes right through them and then I want to pick one side, either above or below the line, and I can put any camera I want within that semicircle, and then I'm going to be nice and clear and communicative. So you'll see that I'm going to choose these different types of shots, where Alex will typically be on the left, Claire will be on the right, and I'm going to pretty much just stay out of trouble. Right, so now that we know what stage line is and what the setup of the location is, Let's kind of look at some of the drawings that I've done ahead of time. At a super wide establishing shot, this lets us know what the setting is and where we are. Characters are going to walk in and kind of be talking. Now we've got, um, instead of a super wide shot, it's a little bit wider, almost a full shot, although we can't see the characters' full bodies, so it's kind of closer to a medium shot. Here's another medium shot. Notice that these shots, uh, as they get a little bit closer and your characters fill up more of the space on the frame, you focus more on the characters, but you need to have enough of the background to be able to communicate. When you get into situations where there's dialogue and talking with your characters, you need to put the camera in a little bit closer because then it communicates something, okay? Last thing to consider is the tighter you go in on the character, the more the emphasis is on their emotion. So that's going to be something that you got to figure out, you know, in regards to what you want to do with your storyboards. Super, super wide, and you've got the background as part of the storytelling element. And then, of course, if you go in and you have a super close up, then it's a completely different story. All right, so this segment is gonna cover projects, file folders, how to save and optimize and things like that. So let's get started. It's essential to note that when you start something in Storyboard Pro, um, you can choose where it goes and you can adjust and you can create your own kind of a layout with the aspect ratio. So if you wanna do like an Instagram 1080 square, this is the area that you would do it. And you can choose a location and give it some info and you get to create a project. Now, as this project is created, what's gonna happen is, is that it's gonna create a directory. So let me just shrink Storyboard Pro just for a moment. And then what I'd like to do is to go and get that ABC folder that we just created. All right, so this is what happens. You've got your directory and it's all set up. So what I like to do is when I start up anything with Storyboard Pro, I immediately hit the save button and once I do that you could see what's going to happen next door. Look at all of these additional files that are created. So critical that you save that because within each of these uh, folders and this entire directory you're going to have a bunch of stuff in Storyboard Pro. So in this, in this folder right here you can see that I've got a bunch of other stuff as well because I've actually gone and created a handful of additional drawings and you can see that there's a separate file for each of these different types of things that I go and create. Super critical when you're working with Storyboard Pro that if you're going to go and email yourself something, don't go and only email this S-board file. Instead, what you need to do is to take the entire directory or the folder and then take and compress that and send it to wherever you need to send it. Before moving on to the next segment, I think there's one more thing that I need to show you. And it's important to note that when you're using Storyboard Pro, you've got all of these folders in the directory. And within each folder, you've got multiple scenes. And within those scenes, you've got multiple panels. 
and within those panels you've got multiple layers. So here's a little trick you could do at the end of your project. So as soon as you're done and you, you're pretty pleased with the way things are going, you can go to the file menu, you choose optimize project, and then have these two selected and click OK. What's going to happen is it's going to flatten all of your images and do what it needs to do and it will get rid of extraneous things that are not needed and it will decrease the file size. That's really going to help you out, especially if your computer is not you know, fast enough to deal with all of these extra files. So something critical that you need to know how to do when you're working with Storyboard Pro is how to change the interface. So as you work through this, um, just be aware that you can increase and decrease the size of the layout. So if you're going to be working on a lot of script stuff, it might be a good idea to take your panel menu and kind of drag this over to the left because you don't really need to, you know, draw or do anything here. So you can have this area be nice and small. You can also go back and kind of change that up. Another thing you could do is to click these arrows and those arrows will allow you to just completely move everything over so you focus just what's on this panel and you know you can move them up or down and you can just kind of scrub to the bottom or scroll to the bottom and then you can get those things right back. Um, just pay attention for all of the arrows that you see within each of these boxes and each of these menus. Now you can have multiple tabs in these areas so in the bottom I like to have my thumbnails ready to go because sometimes it's a little bit easier to just kind of look at the thumbnails and to see what the general sequence of the story is looking like. But then also um, there are times where I'd like to have just the timeline because I can kind of scrub through and you know in the same way that I would with an animation um, I can kind of move things around. All right. So just be aware of that. Uh, if you hit the X mark over here, you can close some of these menus and then hit the plus sign and then you can get any one of them back. So they don't go away, um, they just hide. So what I'll do is go back to my timeline, turn that back on again, and then there it is, I've got my timeline. Now, a lot of times when I'm working with the timeline and I'm done drawing, I'll bring this upwards because that's gonna give me additional time and space especially if I'm going to have multiple audio tracks. So I could have like, I could have like uh, an, an audio track for character one, audio track for character two, background music, and maybe some sound effects. So it would be nice to have multiples there. And then, you know, sometimes you're going to have some camera moves and some animated layers. So you want to have that nice and wide. Um, it's also a good idea to, to kind of flip through these as well because sometimes um, you're going to want to spend a lot of time drawing so you're not going to need your timeline to be as big. So if you want to, you could just kind of close these all together. So just hit those X buttons and then they're going to be gone. And then it's like you have a ton of real estate to be able to draw. And then, you know, you have access to all of these things like your brushes and other aspects in your tool property, like the draw behind and the fill. And then of course, if you want, you can get your colors and your swatches and all that other stuff. And let's just say like you mess everything up and you realize, ah, what am I gonna do? You can go back to the Windows menu and then you can restore your default workspace. And then what'll happen is it'll just go back to normal. Now, just be aware that if this happens and you're on a dual monitor setup, um, when it restarts, it's gonna go back to your your first or your, um, not your auxiliary monitor, but your, your main one. So you could just kind of scoot that back to where it needs to go. Okay, so this segment is gonna cover captions and dialogue. So um, I used uh, Google Docs to create a, an exchange between two characters. So here's the script and it's basically Alex telling Claire a bunch of jokes and we'll have them walking through the park. So I'm gonna just close this and just be aware that I've saved this as an RTF file. And what I would like to do is to go and open up the storyboard panel so I can go and import this, this uh, text. If for some reason your storyboard panel is not open, it's okay, just hit that plus sign, go down to where it says storyboard. And then now what I wanna do is I wanna go and import 
So if you just left click, you can import a caption. I'm going to go and find that uh, script that I just had. And there we go. So now this is really helpful because all of that stuff from the RTF file is right there. And if I want, I can go and click right over here at the top center. And this will allow me to go and to uh, copy and paste a bunch of stuff. So give it a second. Again, I'm on a dual monitor setup. So what's happening is, is I'm not gonna be able to see. It just scoots everything over. Okay, so you can see with this setup that I've got right now, I have all my storyboard panels right there, and we're just in a vertical layout. So what I can do is I can go back to the right side and go back to the storyboard, and then if I want, I can just click, click, and I can uh, control C, and then I can go over here and control V in any of these fields that I want. It's really helpful to be able to go ahead and do that. Now, I'm just putting these over here in the slugging and the notes section because, um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to take too much time in this review video. You would obviously um, go through your entire storyboard and drag and drop things. And if you want to make additional changes, you could always do that. You know, you can continue to type. Um, additional things in there but that's essentially it you want to go and have that storyboard um, panel set up next to your drawings and next to this other layout okay so what happens is, is you can just click these buttons and it will go back to the default state now there's one last thing that I'd like to talk about um, with captions and it's gonna be important that you know how to do this um, for instance, you can change the names. So if you don't want it to say dialogue and you want it to say something else, if you want to give additional notes and have some kind of a category, what you can do is you can go to this button that's right over here and you can rename your caption. So maybe I'm going to just put this as camera moves. And what that's going to do is it's going to change that field. So if I know I'm going to have a bunch of camera moves with this storyboard, maybe it just makes sense for me to do that. Or maybe I need to identify that this is a super wide establishing shot and that this is a full shot and this is a medium shot. Whatever the case is, you have a lot of usability right there. You can also go back and then you could just delete that caption as well. So if you click yes, that field is going to be completely gone. And then there it is. You just have your dialogue and your action notes. Um, for some storyboards, you might only need like one or two fields. Um, and I find that with my experience, that's more than enough. Okay, so let's talk about layers with your panels in Storyboard Pro. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna kind of sketch out something. Let's make this a super rough sketch, and then we'll go from there. And maybe we're gonna trace over, and here's our character, you know, smile and wave. All right, so I have the light table on. Notice that I'm on layer A. So if I want to go and create a new bitmap or a vector layer, I could click on one of those. Pretty much I always use a vector layer because when you, when you use a vector layer, you can always go back and make little adjustments and things like that, you know, to individual pieces. And then you can merge and flatten all these layers later, and you can, if you want, turn it into a bitmap. Anyways, so now that that's all done, let me go back, and I want to create a brand new layer. And let me just draw this character on top. And there we go. So now I've got a, a little bit cleaner of a drawing and maybe I'm gonna make this character look a little bit more realistic. Let me click these little eyeballs right here to turn off the visibility. And now I'm looking good. Now if I want, I can select on the layer underneath my B and go in and I can press the new vector layer a couple times and I'm gonna add a few more. Let me go back to my tool properties and let me just choose um, something that's going to go underneath my B layer and if I want I could just go and color and give this kid a red shirt and some blue hair. So that's super handy to be able to go and just draw freely and 
And let's give this guy a red tongue and like a gray interior to the mouth. Okay, and then eventually all of that is gonna hide and be underneath, especially if I turn off this, uh, this uh, light table. All right, so um, let's just say I don't want this layer anymore. I can just select on it, hit that trash can, and I can go ahead and delete it. I can go and click on one layer, hold shift, and then click on the other one. And then if you kind of hover over here, you could either duplicate or you could group those layers. So let me duplicate them um, just in case I want to have something um, special. So I'm going to just turn off the visibility of these two. Now I've got these duplicated layers. So maybe I want to go and shift click them and then select all this stuff and kind of change and make my character a little bit different. So what's nice about that is uh, by duplicating these layers, I've gone and I've made some adjustments. So you can kind of see here are my other layers and let me just hide the visibility with these two. So I have my original sketch and then by duplicating I have something that's completely different and um, it gives me a little bit more control and it allows me to, to retain the original artwork. And we'll end this video by shifting and clicking two of those and then I can either group those layers. So now they're going to be together in a group so I could turn the visibility on and off or if I can go back and I could shift click them again. And if I right click, I can go and merge both of these two layers together and then I'm going to get just one solid layer. Uh, I'm going to call this a vector layer and then if I'm going to delete my original as well. And instead of calling it a merge layer, I'm just going to call this character. You can go back later and adjust the name if you want to. And there it is. And I can just kind of click, click, and I can name that again, uh, character one. So at any rate, that's how you do layers. Um, uh, make sure you make sure you use the vector layers um, so you can go back and have some control. You can group your layers. If you don't like any of them, you could just hit this little trash can to delete it. If you click click on the writing portion, you can rename them. If you shift click them and select a few, you can duplicate them and make adjustments. And then also you can just click over here and then you can click and drag and change the opacity. All right, so let's go over some drawing techniques in Storyboard Pro. Uh, I'm gonna start with the brush tool in red, and then I'm gonna go to the pencil tool. Let me choose blue, and I'll draw something else. Okay, so essentially what we've got is two separate tools that we use for drawing. Let me just kind of zoom in to the pencil tool, and you can kind of see what it's used for. Uh, pencil tool is great because uh, you could use the contour editor to make a selection and then you can go and make these different types of adjustments and you can drag these handles um, that are uh, that are activated when you select on the anchor point so just be aware of that because if you're gonna do any kind of cleanup type uh, illustration this might be a good tool for you to use when you open this up in Harmony, you can get a nice thick and thin as well, but you don't have that ability in Storyboard Pro. Okay, now um, let's look at the contour editor with the brush tool. Now if I go and select this piece right here with the brush tool, and if I go and use the contour editor, then I can go and adjust some of these anchor points that are out here. So I can get a nice thick and thin um, but I can't really change the direction of the line. The good thing is, let me click out of there, and I can go and hold this down. There's a thing called the center line editor. So if you use the brush tool and you select it with the, the center line editor, you can get that same type of a anchor point with the handles and all that, but you get into a little bit of trouble when you do some modification, kind of like I've done over here. So just be aware of that. There's some certain limitations with it. Um, flip your Cintiq stylus over, and then you could do some erasing, or you can actually go to the eraser tool and you can erase as well. So that's pretty handy. Um, also, let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna just delete this layer. And there we go, trash can a couple times. Let me add a new layer. 
I want to show you one other tool. It's called the cutter tool. So let me go back to my brush. One, two, three, and a four. I'm going to click and hold on the selection tool, drag down to the bottom where it says cutter, and I could slice off these ends. And what's great is you can go back and you can select these pieces and in your tool properties, as you scroll down to the bottom, you have some choices with what the ends are gonna look like. They can be rounded or flat. So just be aware you have a lot of different control over how your line work is gonna look as you adjust and do things. All right, so that was one part. Let me go to the timeline because I wanna show you how onion skin works. And I also wanna do some stuff with color. So let me go to the timeline and I'm gonna just zoom in right here. And I'm gonna just uh, press P a handful of times because I want all of these pieces of artwork to be in the same scene. So that way when I turn on onion skin, I can kind of trace things over. Notice the onion skin is up here and you have the number of samplings before or after. So click on those to increase the number of samples you have before and behind your current keyframe. So anyways, the reason we do that is so you can kind of go over here and then move to the next frame and go over there. And you can see what the previous frame looked like. So you kind of go back and trace over. So as you do your animation, you're gonna see that things are gonna, things are gonna track and move um, appropriately. If I go to the middle keyframe and then I go and turn on my onion skin, you could see that the green sample shows the ones that are going to be coming ahead. The red samples are the previous ones. And then the one with the color, which is blue, which is red, um, um, pardon me, the one with the color, which is blue, is the one that's going to actually show you the current drawing. So get comfortable using that. All right, I got one more last thing for you and then this video is going to be done so what i would like to do is to go to the color panel so if i go back to tool properties you can see that i've got a bunch of different colors here so what happens is is let me just turn off onion skin so it's not so distracting and i'm on this panel let me just choose black okay what happens is is i can go and i could choose any color that i want and if I go and select maybe that purple and I hit the plus sign, what's gonna happen is it's gonna give me a new swatch. I gotta click, click that swatch. You can see that the color, um, when I select on that swatch, that color sample is right there. So if I double click on it, I can go and click and adjust, or I can go and change that color right there. And then when I'm all set, I can just kind of close this up. All right, so let's talk about using color in Storyboard Pro. So if you kind of click, you can see the color that you have selected is in that box. So you can just kind of go anywhere and select and choose any other color that you want. Um, I think it's pretty handy to have that light and darkness available, but also to have all of your hues as well. Um, you know, and basically what you do is you kind of click on that color and then you kind of adjust accordingly. And then you got all these brand new colors that you that you have available to you. So I think that's important um, to make sure that you have, make sure the slider is not on you know full tint, but instead get some actual color in there and don't have this on full shadow as well, because you want to be able to have some form of color. And then you could you could change and adjust accordingly. Okay. So that's the first thing. Make sure that this little box right here is displaying the actual color that you want. And then at some point, make sure not to drag it down to like full shadow because then it's always gonna come out gray or black. And that's gonna be like a pain point. You wanna make sure it's gonna do and behave the way you want it to, okay? So let me slide those all the way back up. Next thing I want to do is to show you, you can actually go and select on any of these color swatches and you can make them and delete them. I'm going to just hit the minus sign a bunch of times. And what that's going to do is delete the swatches that I just created. I can go and select any color that I want, hit the plus sign, and I got a brand new swatch right there. Hit the plus sign and I can do this as many times as I want. And I can make all the colors that I want, save them, export them, use them in other projects. But at any rate, basically what you do is you go and 
you select on the color that you want and then you change it and then of course you can go back within that color and you could lighten it or you can darken it and that's kind of it um, but to be honest with you when you're gonna be working on a storyboard you're pretty much using your gray tones and maybe a little bit of red and blue and that's it but if you want to get fancy um, yeah you could use all those colors all right so here's a super handy technique on something called auto mats so I'm gonna start first by selecting my shape tool and I'm on the background layer and I'm gonna choose a super light gray and I wanna select draw behind and fill. So hopefully I drag some kind of a box and it's gonna fill gray for me on my background layer. Now, if I press the two key repeatedly, it's gonna zoom in. You can start to see like, oh, okay, well if I have my light table um, selected, I could actually see my characters but if I turn off the light table, it looks a little distracting. So there's a thing called the auto mat. Now if you want, you can go and create a new layer underneath and you could select and you could just start painting underneath. And that may or may not help you out with the workflow you have, but there's a shortcut for doing something like this and that's by making something called an auto mat. So at any rate, now if I press one repeatedly and zoom out, with the light table off, it's very easy to see my characters. And even though if I kind of turn off this auto mat that I created, you could see the line work of the background traveling through them. So let me just let me just uh, go and delete this. Now the long form is to right click the actual layer and click auto mat, but there's also set as a default, there's a shortcut. So I can kind of click on that. And you basically have this menu that pops up. Now, what I like to do is to create a mat on a new layer so that way they're isolated. I don't want the new artwork to go and populate onto that layer, so I leave this one checked. I leave these two unchecked, and then I just go and choose a color that I like. If you want to, you can click click, and then you could choose the brightness and the darkness. Um, I already have it set to white, so that works for me. You can also increase and decrease the radius. So what I would recommend is to adjust those numbers to see what happens and see what you like. Okay, I'm gonna click OK and notice what happens to my characters. Also, I just got a brand new layer right there. So let me just kind of zoom in by pressing two repeatedly. And it's not perfect, but it kind of does the job. It's pretty nice that I could just go and click the letter M and it's already set and it's ready to go. Um, now, one last thing that I think is important to note, notice that the character's face actually colored in, but the body didn't. And the reason is, is because this is a closed circle um, or a closed shape. So if I go back in and I kind of draw, and if I close off that shape, and then, oops, let me choose black. And then if I go over here to close off that hand, go over here to close off the body, then if I go back and I press M to auto mat, it's gonna fill in. Uh, let me keep both, let me replace. Uh, notice how it's gonna go and fill in and it's gonna change that actual layer, okay? So just be aware of that as you try to do this because a lot of times you're gonna be using gray for the background of your storyboards. It's nice to have a character that's gonna stand out. All right, so let's add a little bit of audio. I did some recording ahead of time, so with this clip right here in this panel, I bet you 10 bucks that I can make you laugh. What I wanna do is I wanna right click inside this audio track, A1, and let me import the sound that I created ahead of time. I'm gonna go navigate to it, and it's right over here. Click open, and I can keep it as a new audio track or the current, keep it at the first frame or the current, and I could overwrite, I'm gonna just click OK, and there it is. Now, let me just hover over the edge, and what I could do is click, hold, drag, and trim this downwards. You can also right click, and um, you can go and slice your audio, and then click the pieces you don't want and delete. I find this works a lot better. Okay, so let me just kind of turn on this audio right here, turn on the volume button, and let's play. I bet you 10 bucks I can make you laugh. Okay, so now that that audio is in, let me show you another way to get audio in. And in that same manner that we did, 
um, you know, you can go and get background music and sound effects that you have saved and get that to show up as well. Uh, one other technique I want to show you is how to record audio. So notice that this says sure it won't happen over here in the dialog box. So what I want to do is to right click and record a sound. You can also do this over here, file menu, import, record sound. There we go. And here we go. Sure, it won't happen. So now that that's recorded, I can hit the play button. Sure. That worked. I'm going to press OK. So that's kind of it. Um, so what I would recommend is to build your audio track ahead of time, have your script all laid out and plugged in right here so you could start acting things out and then you could go clean everything up in post. All right, so in this final segment, what I'd like to do is to show you a couple tricks on how to get your, um, your storyboard nice and cleaned up and then we'll export to an animatic. So notice that I've got scene one. Over here, if I click, I've got scene 2A. Got a couple snapshots right there, but this is called scene uh, three underscore four. And then it kind of follows the sequence, but then we've got a little bit of an issue. Notice that these two should be grouped together in a scene and this one should be separated. So let's just get this um, storyboard all cleaned up and then um, we'll export it. So I wanna get this uh, playhead right here in between because I wanna split these two pieces because I want them to be in separate scenes. So I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna split the current scene. Be careful where you do this. I'm gonna click OK. Be careful where you do this because you don't want it to accidentally move things around. Um, what you click and where you click is super important and critical in Storyboard Pro. Now notice that these two should be grouped together. So if I click, hold, and drag this one, I can move this over to any place or location that I want in the storyboard. But if I wanted to connect to this previous one, I wanna just have that green line kind of snap to the left and I let go, and now they're grouped together. So as mentioned earlier, we've got this unorthodox way of numbering our scenes, and that's a result of constantly cutting and pasting and duplicating all of these panels. So one of the techniques that Storyboard Pro can automate for you is to renumber all these scenes. So I wanna to go to the Storyboard menu. So as mentioned earlier, we have a bunch of scenes and they're not numbered appropriately in the right sequence. So the trick to fixing that is to go to the Storyboard menu, go to Rename Scene, and then what you want to do is you want to click on the new name. I'm going to make that number one. And what that's going to do is it's going to name my first scene as number one. Let me click this drop down menu to renumber my scenes. And then what it'll do is it's going to show all of them in sequence from start to stop. And it will show you the new name that it's going to be given. So once you're satisfied with that and you can type in whatever you want right there, I'm going to click OK. And now it's gonna renumber my scenes appropriately. So scene two, panel one, panel two, panel three. This should be scene three, panel one and two. Scene four, scene five. This should be scene six, panel one. Scene six, panel two. And then finally seven. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that save button. And now it's time to export this as a PDF. So file menu, export, PDF. I'm gonna choose a three panel layout. Uh, I'm gonna give this a name and a location. So I'm gonna call this animatic dashboard. And I want the three panel layout. I'm gonna go for, um, I could choose all my scenes or I could exclude this panel right here. So I'm gonna go to selected scenes and let me choose everything except for scene number one, because that was just my planning sketch. I don't want that in there. And then I'm gonna click uh, open in a new document. I'm gonna click export. Okay, so now that that's set up, um, you pretty much got this ready to go. So this will open up in just a moment. Here it is. And then you can, uh, let's go take a look at those snapshots that we created. So we've got the camera moves right there. Select and scroll downwards. A little bit more camera movement, a little bit more. 
and then what we've got is we've got two separate two separate pieces of artwork so notice that we've got scene three panel one but I've got two separate locations for the same artwork and it's the same panel and it shows the time and the duration so those are our two screenshots and then we've got everything nice and cleaned up all right, let's go and turn this into an actual animatic as well. So let me hit the close button, file menu, export, and we're gonna choose a movie. And then I need to choose a location. So if I want, I can click over here on this folder and then I could go and choose the desktop. Then I can call this what I want. So I'm gonna call this animatic dash storyboard. And you could choose, um, based on the system you have, you can choose any type of a layout that you want. Mine, I'm working on a Mac right now, so I could just choose an H.264. If I was working on a, a PC, I'd probably choose WMV, unless it was configured to do MOV or MP4. Um, leave this at the current size, and I could do all my scenes. If I want, I could do that same technique where I, if I wanted to, I could, click on the selected scenes and I could exclude number one. I'm not gonna do that, I'll just click all this time just to show you, and I'm gonna click export. Notice that when you export a storyboard, the progress bar is up here, and when you export a movie, the progress bar shows right there. That's perfectly normal. All right guys, I hope that was helpful. See you in the next video, thanks, bye-bye.